to access uh, some of the pictures and videos. Uh, the senior prom that we hosted last Friday was quite a hit. Uh, that was our first uh, 2023 prom in this space. And um, from the report of the seniors, they had a great time. So it's something that we look forward to doing again next um, year. And just a shameful plug, I, I sincerely want to thank my team of Mabel and Michelle and Helen and Rena, that in my absence they coordinated uh, the event and it just launched beautifully. Uh, another update is that there's been a change in the national grid representative. This representative, her name is Rebecca, and she normally uh, has been coming here on the fourth Fridays. That has since changed. The schedule now will be every third when, uh, Tuesday of every month. And that's national grid. Not only uh, is it open for seniors, but it's open to all Lynn residents um, just to see if they're eligible for any additional and much needed discounts. For upcoming activities, uh, Lynn Senior Center will be having field trips to Richardson's Ice Cream, uh, casino trip to Encore, uh, of course, Salem Willows, and we also will be having an AMC movie day. I'm happy to announce, after it took some time, uh, with coordination, another uh, plug to Brothers Table, we will be starting uh, a supper club that I was told uh, was something that seniors really enjoyed at the previous space. So every second Tuesday of the month, uh, we'll be having that supper club. So the first supper club that will be hosted will be on July 11th and that will be from 3 p.m. to 5.30, provided with a hot meal and fellowship, and um, it will be led by the seniors, and so I'm um, looking forward to that. Services, we continue to have outreach services uh, through uh, our outreach coordinator, Michelle. We also have, um, Michelle does a partnered uh, caregiver and nutrition group once a month, that's every, uh, I think every third, or every second Thursday, excuse me, that they actually leave the premises, walk over to Gliss, and they prepare something healthy and just have a great open dialogue. Our beauty services continue with uh, monthly barbering and haircuts for the ladies, manicures. Uh, we also have an exercise group that meets every Tuesday with Rosemary from Gliss, and she walks with the seniors for about a mile, and that's from one o'clock to about 1.45 every Tuesday after lunch. Yesterday we had eight seniors, and they had a great time, despite the, the humidity. Holly from uh, Gliss also comes out and does counseling once a month, on Tuesdays as, as well, uh, counseling services with Holly from Gliss. Dental screenings continue to happen monthly, provided by Dr. Meany. We are still searching for a competent and consistent podiatrist. We've had some kind of back and forth, but we're looking to secure that. Uh, podiatry services uh, hopefully will resume in August. I'm also happy to report that since being back, I will resume the tech class, Tech Goes Home, the digital literacy, which for those that don't know is the basic internet 
Uh, I've got a pretty long wait list of seniors, um, and it's 10 students at a time. So we will be starting that um, in July as well with the assistance of some IT students. So we're going to kill two birds with one stone and have that intergenerational experience that we've often talked about in a, in a supportive learning environment. But this is going to be for the Tech Goes Home program. We continue to have Fallon and United Health insurance representatives come uh, on Tuesdays. For events, we have July 3rd. We're going to have our July 4th celebration with live music, uh, hot dogs, and uh, uh, accoutrements, if you will, <laughs> and, uh, because we are closed on July 4th. And also, um, thanks to all the rain, we will be having our harvest and taste for the above crops in July as well. And that's something that I believe the seniors enjoyed, uh, that kind of farm to table experience last year. So we're going to kick it up <coughs> this year. And lastly, I've placed a phone call. There was a, a trip that we took. It was a, a boat trip. I think uh, Captain Walsh provided that boat trip. So I've placed a phone call into him. I know the seniors really enjoyed uh, cruising around the harbor and having lunch. And so I'm looking for that uh, field trip as well. And finally, uh, the newsletter will be distributed soon, but for those that have Facebook access, I encourage you that once the announcement is made, we have the Facebook um, access for our newsletter. And that's all I have. Okay, and then your financial report. And she has her financial report right here, so if anyone has any questions regarding it, it's all printed out. Um, and look it over real quick and um, see if you have any questions for Tanya. Tanya, when you said the um, supper club, it's my brother's table. My brother's table will be donating the food. Okay. I or another team member will be picking up the food relatively about 2.30. It will always be a hot meal to be delivered here at 3 o'clock and the supper club will run from 3 p.m. to 5.30. Oh, it's going to be. It's okay. going to be here. Oh, okay. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Tanya? Mm -hmm. no. um, okay. Just a clarification. At the last meeting, um, Attorney Lamana had uh, volunteered or uh, to take over, to ask for the budget to be itemized. <clears throat> Do we need to follow up with him on that? I think he talked. So there was a clarification. If I may answer yes. that. What uh, the solic solicitor's office spoke about was that if anyone wanted an itemized budget explanation, they would have to go through Jim Lamana's, you know, the solicitor's office. But that the budget that is provided is a general budget. But if you wanted a more specific um, breakdown of the budget, that request would have to go through the solicitor's office. Okay, so Council on Aging Board, may I have a motion for the clerk to send a letter to Solicitor Lamana's office for a breakdown of the budget as we've discussed over the last few months? I merely join to make a motion so that we send you. Okay, okay, I will do so this week. Thank you. Um, do we need a roll call on that, Pam? Uh, I don't think so. No? no. Okay. All right, so send that out, and then they'll do the itemized, okay. get it through um, the CFO's office, and they have it itemized. All right. Any other questions for Tanya? Could, could I just ask Tanya on um, the budget? Otherwise, I'm classified. What actually would fall in that category? Otherwise, I'm classified. I would have to consult with my billing clerk. It, it could be miscellaneous. Um, because it's a 2000. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the line. 
Yeah. Mabel, Mabel is in tonight. Let me see if I can get an answer right now. She's going to check on Mabel right now. Over here? First floor. Yeah. 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 Because you have office supplies, senior center, recreational, professional, outside. I'm wondering if it's more the bands or the mariachi the band that came in, that no. type of stuff. No. Um, until she gets that answer, does anybody have any other questions? I have a question. When are we going to introduce the new um, director? Okay. Yes. Okay, so what she's going to do, we do have, that's on my list right here. Oh, okay, sorry. We do have a new director starting. Mm -hmm. She's coming in July 3rd. Oh, July 3rd. Um, her name is Megan Simpson Best. Um, a few people here were on the interview committee. Um, they found her. A, to be most qualified and best fitting to come to the senior center. I think she's going to work <coughs> very well with the staff here. I think she has some great ideas. She is a licensed social worker. She has a very, she has a great background. I think there is an article in today's paper regarding her starting with all the information about her. Um, so she will be here um, Monday, right? Yeah, Monday, July 3rd. And I'm sure it's going to take her a little while just to get in here and figure out what's going on. She'll be working very closely with Tanya and the rest of the staff. And um, I think she's going to work out very well. I think everyone's going to really like her. Oh, I have one other question. Sure. Um, so this is our last uh, board meeting for the summer. During the summer, there is a um, thing on the commons of all the different organizations in Lynn, pretty much, to give information and stuff. Our, is the senior center going to be represented <coughs> there? We did that last year, like have a booth. It was downtown. It was kind of like a very festive yeah. weekend on a Saturday. Yes, the billing clerk and I did it last year. And we'll be uh, setting up a table to do that as well. It's more of an informational day right, uh, right. about, yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Do, do great. we have a date for that yet? I've not been provided the date. The date comes yet. from the city. Okay. Smitty? Do we have a driver? Um, no, wait a minute. Now we're skipping. Now you guys are skipping around on me. I know. <laughs> no, stay. I know. The I was going to say, I was, you know, I am the clerk. And taking notes, it's best if we follow the agenda. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because then I have to find out where we're at. The, the full-time driver shop, I'm going to check with me. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah. The driver's <coughs> job has been posted for a full-time driver. They have not hired somebody yet. I think the posting is still out there. Um, Tan is going to double-check. I'm not sure if they started interviews yet. So we have, we did post it for a full-time driver. Not part time, so we'll be a full time driver, mm -hmm. which we need. Okay. It was getting too difficult with just a part time. Yeah, it is. It's too much. Yeah. Um, do what do we need just, so, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just skip around a little because I do have to leave in about 15 minutes, but um, the driving driver position has been posted as full time. So, I know this is something everybody was very interested in. This just came in this morning. These are just a little bit of schematics, it's not finalized. We don't have a price yet. Um, just 
I had them send this to me just so you know they are working on the design for this building. It does take time. I don't have the timeline yet when it's going to start. There's supposed to be a better one coming out. I think he said a 2D one so you'll be able to read it better. So as we get more information on this, we will either email it to the Council of Aging staff, to the board, and we'll make sure Tanya has one down here at the Senior Center if anybody else wants to look at it. But we do have to remember there was three phases to this. So phase one is the first floor here to put the staircase going up to the second floor. Because right now the only thing up there is the elevator. There is the only other staircase goes outside. So they're putting a staircase inside, inside the senior center to go upstairs. So you'll have access that way plus the elevator. Um, like I said, I just got this 10 minutes ago. Um, so as soon as I do get more information, it will be emailed to the board as I get it, and it will be down here with Tanya also. And if anybody has questions, you can call me, you can email me, and I'll try to answer the best I can. Does anybody have any questions on this? Because I know these are very difficult to read after 10 years. I still have trouble reading some of these. <laughs> It took me the longest time to figure out the front door and back door on a lot of these. Yeah. Yes? The question I have is the stairway and the elevator will be sufficient for handicapped people? You won't be getting a handicap ramp or anything? No. You know what? I, I think I really can't answer that question. Okay. I want to say the handicap would be the elevator okay. because they have to have the staircase too for a second egress. Right, yeah, yeah, in case something um, So there won't, I think it'd be too steep of a ramp to go up. You'd right. take too much space probably from down yeah. below yeah. to get the ramp. That's yeah. why we have the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> they don't say just only they run to the saloon, they say, but they, it's too many rooms there, it's not there. Yeah, the nurse's room is not there. Okay. The, the room for, they, they say they're going to do it one for the people relax themselves. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is phase one this work, phase so. Well, if you look on the bottom over here, I know. they're multi, <clears throat> excuse me, they're supposed to be multi purpose rooms. Mm -hmm. So, right now, you do have the salon here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell them here. Yeah. Yeah. And some of these other rooms are going to be multi purpose rooms. Okay. I think we went through that in the morning, it may be the craft room. Um, in the afternoon, it could be the knitting room. Then you're going to have your computers. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be multi-service rooms that you can use them for two or three different events during the day. Yeah, but like it now, during the day, but because you have we to don't for know. The top of the time or? Yeah, because we no. don't know yet exactly which one it shows here. We do have a kitchen. Then you have your cafeteria down the end. Mm -hmm. So now this whole middle is going to be open. You don't have to sit in the middle. If you want to have an activity where everybody's sitting, mm -hmm. you can have an activity now. And your kitchen's going to be down the other end, so people can come in and have breakfast down there. So you're not taking up. When you guys come in in the morning, everyone's sitting in the same room. We can't do an activity until everyone is done with breakfast or lunch. So this way, you will be eating, having breakfast or lunch down the other end. And then we can start having different activities if somebody's not, if, how do I say, if they're not coming for breakfast. You yeah, want to just start on the quiet room. We quiet room. Yes. Yeah. The rooms are small. Are they going to break through the wall? As far as I know, they are going to expand some of the rooms. Um, Especially for like I said, when I get a better draft of this, I will, I know we're taking, July and August off, but I can still have a meeting if they can come down here once they have all the schematics done and the 2D ones that you can actually look and read. I can have them come down here and show us exactly what's what on this piece of paper. Oh, yeah. I'm not the architect, so I don't right. know. 
reading this, what multi-purpose rooms are going to be where. But I do know the quiet room is something everybody wanted, so right. the quiet room. But they, they have to, not in that room to move because like yeah. uh, they put they, they put in, in, in Domino. Yeah. We are now together. And the people that play pool can it's be with loud. the Domino because they know it yeah. don't mean anything yeah. to gross and concentrate. And that's why we're doing these separate rooms so they won't have the pool table mm -hmm. and in with the Domino, the so it will be quiet. Mm -hmm. So I know that Tanya doing the best thing, like I want trying to, because it's only yeah. we have a part time here in the, in the center. The other time, what the lady doing the crochet, and we have to play two domino. And we can make it together because they are crocheting. Yeah, and that's what they're trying to do. So if there's a crocheting class, a knitting class, most likely they would be together. The pool table would not be in with the dominoes. And this is when I have to have the team come in and explain what room's going to be what. Because this is just phase one, the first floor. The second floor is phase two, but I think there were uh, three phases on here. We have phase 1A, phase 1B, and then phase 1C. So if you look at the yellow, which there's no yellow on this, phase 1A. As far as I know, phase one was supposed to be the staircase and the kitchen is what they're gonna work on first. Once that's set, then they're gonna to go to start expanding the rooms. Cause they wanna do phase by phase so we do not have to displace the senior center. We don't wanna move anybody out of here. So that's why it's gonna be in three different phases. So they're gonna work, that end of the building could be closed off and we will work out of this end. And then Tanya, if I'm correct, weren't we saying like, they were kinda of gonna put the kitchen makeshift kitchen at this end so they can serve while that end was closed down. They, there was a few different options. There was a options. few different conversations. But as soon as I get the 2D version and all the other paperwork, we can have a meeting during the summer if everyone's up to it. I can have the architects come in and explain exactly what is what as soon as I get the rest of the paperwork and we find out what the funding and what the cost of the project is. But we are still getting the second floor, so do not worry that the second floor is still us. <coughs> yeah. I, I have another question because um, the friends purchased this pool table, and um, it was when the center opened, both pool tables were in that room. I've met some of the fellas that played pool, and they want to know why is it not in there again? Well, I know now the domino people have been there, but are there plans to put the both pool tables back? Because we have, it, where's the other pool table? It's in right the game here. room. The uh, See, they seem that they take it out of this because when they play pool, we want their playing domino and they don't have it, they not yeah. just play domino. Right. 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 And that's what so, this whole plan is about, to make the space. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm sure once everything is done, we're going to have both our pool tables because I know there are some seniors that have not been back because they like to play pool all day and they right. weren't able to. Um, I have spoke to a few of them and they have asked, when's the pool tables? We want to come back. And that was the thing. And that's the whole purpose of expanding the building is to make the extra room to have the two, two pool tables there, to have domino so it's quiet, have your computer class, have your knitting, have your crocheting, uh, your arts and craft classes. So mm. they're going to, some of them will be multi-purpose rooms that they will be able to be used for two or three different activities mm. or classrooms. Because you can need your English second language class, that has to be quiet in order to teach a computer class. So this is what it's all about. We're trying, it's gonna take a little while. Um, we're gonna be going through some construction, but we did not wanna displace the seniors. We wanna keep the senior center here during construction. Everyone's, it's, it, everyone loves it down here, so we just wanna keep everybody in the same routine. Might be disrupted a little, but, and you can watch the progress being done. 
right then and there, you don't have to say what's going on. You're going to see it all happening, mm -hmm. which is going to be a little noisy. It's going to be exciting. But as soon as I do get the rest of this, we will, if I have it by the middle of July, if it's before the third, fourth Wednesday, I can have a meeting. I'll let everyone know if they're available. If not, we'll have it in August once I have everything. Anybody have any other questions regarding that? No, I think it's a great idea that you do that yep. maybe in August. Then we can just, you know, see what size the rooms are going to possibly be. And yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Like I said, I can have somebody here to explain it all, too. I'm not an architect, so it's difficult. I can barely see the writing on the paper anyway. So, But like I said, it's a three-phase project. So it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a little time. Any, so no more questions on that? All right. Um, okay, construction of the senior center, financial report we did. All right, um, we do have the two board positions open. They're going to fill them during the summer, put the applications out. They have a pile of applications. They're going to go through those, the mayor's office. Um, does that, Pam, did we get letters from Phil and... Barbara. Barbara, um, no, not letters, but uh, just an yeah. email just stating they're not coming back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're set with that. Uh, the mayor's office is working on that. Um, let's get back to Joan. Friends of COA report. Joan. Oh. Okay. The meeting of the Friends of the Wind Council on Aging was held on May 25th, 2023. At this time, an email from Tanya was received with a quote from the Blue Notes Band, the entertainment for the July 3rd celebration. The Friends voted to pay $160 as requested. The Friends will hold a 50-50 raffle on the 3rd of July. The next scheduled meeting is tomorrow, June 29th. Respectfully submitted, don't be no liaison to the LCOA board. Well, thank you, Joan. Anybody have any questions for Joan? Other friends? No. All right. Well, I don't mean to be rude, but like I said, I had to. I have an appointment. I have to be out of here, and there's only a few things left. And I think. I got a quick question. Sure. Is there any way we can get a corny over this sitting area right here? Wait, when you come in the door? Yeah. No, I think he means on the yeah, patio area. Oh, in the, the patio. Because it's very hot to set out there. Can look into some quotes for retractable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. have them retractable like on All right, let me look into that. Okay. I will. I'm just trying to think. I start with um, inspectional services, see, then work to the mayor's office, and we'll see what we can do. I don't know what we have for budget. If the and speaking of budget and money, I'll interject. It looks like that two million is a formula grant, and that. It looks like it was dated back to 1994. So we'll do a deep dive into um, how that money is being allocated. But that money looks like it was part of a formula grant. Um, I'm not going to say maybe we could use it for the awning, but we'll I'll meet with the billing clerk to see how that money is going to be utilized, or if it just sits, or what the story is with that. I, I think it will be important because, um, understandably, Tanya has explained, the staff comes in early to put on the coffee and prepare for the day. The center opens technically at 9. People are dropped off, whether it's raining, snowing, heat, whatever, and they have to sit out and wait. The only ones allowed in the building are the volunteers. So that seems like a legitimate request to protect. Well, you can't have it. You're the hoarding in the snow anyways. Right, right, right. right. But, a, but a covering of some sort right. during some, inclement weather. Some weathers, type of yeah. protection right. for them. I don't think anybody be sitting up there in the snow. I do sometimes. I like fresh air. Um, but like this morning, it, it was say. at some point it was pouring out. And yeah, so these were already well, dropped um, off no. sitting out there. Yeah, I know. Okay. I know, I know it's difficult because a lot of people don't know if this do get dropped off before the center opens, so. 
something we have to look into. I'll, I'll wait for it. Go ahead, John. No, I, I don't know if this is a good question, but back a while back, uh, Brendan Crichton, I guess he allocated a, a grant for a million dollars for the senior center. Yes. Am I under the... That's part of the construction that's going that's on. Part that's part of the construction. That <laughs> okay, because we never really hear much about it, so I didn't, mm. I didn't know if that was part of a budget that was... That goes towards the construction okay. of the first phase. Okay. Right. Yeah. We want to thank Brendan again for that. All right, everyone. I'm sorry, but I do have to sneak out. I apologize. I left you in good hands with Pam. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone, I'll see everybody on Monday anyways. I'm sorry. Bring your money for the 50-50. I will have my 50-50. And I'll pass all my tickets back. We have to remind people. <laughs> it's payday too, by the way. I have a question. I don't understand why we have a, a waiting room inside for the seniors if they're going to be dropped off early rather than having them have to stay outside. See, what it is with these insurance rights, you, they, they, they're like a taxi cab. They come when they come. Right. Yeah, but the like senior say, center oh, should have a, a like, even a hospital, everything has a waiting room where you're inside. So you can wait. So why doesn't this place have? Well, we we, we uh, obtained the building how it is, and if we did have a, have a waiting room, we would still need it to be staffed and supervised. And unfortunately, uh, due to the low staffing level that we have, um, we're just not able to do that. It is it is it is a kindness on behalf of some staff members that come in early, half an hour early, we're not paid for that, uh, to come in and it does take a while. You know, if you don't see it, you don't know. The coffee maker actually takes literally 10 to 15 minutes for that button to turn green to start the coffee. We pride ourselves on at least preparing some decent breakfast uh, for the seniors. Sometimes we're cutting fruit, sometimes we're setting that up. And sometimes it's only one person in the kitchen right. setting that up. And unfortunately, the kitchen coordinator has a different schedule. He doesn't come in until 9. Uh, so what we didn't want is for seniors to come in at 9 and have to wait another half an hour to have something served to them. So and I, 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 it's like I understand that. Yes. But I, I'm trying to think of a way that either it, it, the seniors' ride is coordinated uh, you know, with the time that they get here, or someone just comes early. Uh, you have a staff person, maybe some volunteer or something, that is, you comes and they can let the seniors in. Because I think about it, if it's cold, if it's raining, right. uh, it's too hot, and they have to sit, sit. it's not under their control of yes. when they really get here. So to me, it would be something that, that I would think. No, it's not ideal. I agree with you. It's yeah. not ideal. Just to, so, I, so I agree. So what is the big deal? So if you have staff coming in at 8.30 to set up for the coffee, and so if a, a senior gets dropped off at 8.30, what, what is the real problem for them so to come in? So our schedule actually starts at 8.30. I'm saying that I'm coming in, or there's some people that are coming in at 8 o'clock, right. and there have been times that I'm finding seniors here 8 o'clock, 8.15. Right. So what the issue is is that we cannot supervise right. safely if we are in the kitchen. When you're in the kitchen, you are not in our peer view. We cannot hear the doorbell. We cannot respond if there's an incident in the main room. God forbid somebody slips, something happens. There is no witness. So there is no one to bear witness to quote unquote an incident. And okay. I'd like to knock on wood that we've had very limited right. incidents because of the supervision that is provided. So, so is it just more liability? It is, it is a liability, no, no, too. No, no, as, it, yeah. it, it is somewhat of a liability to, uh, you know, not be able to provide that extra eye. No. We have seniors coming in early. We have on a newsletter that we open at 9, something happens, and we cannot account for how or when that happened. Yeah, even sometimes you read the, the, the inside, we have pair with, with they have to go to go looking for the people or something like that. I want to ask you a question. Why, uh, if, the, if they don't stand with the, uh, how to say, full-time driver, 
why do you don't charge something for the people for the transportation? So I will answer this, and then I will unfortunately have to excuse myself for an 11 o'clock meeting. Yeah. Early, early on, before we opened, my predecessor, Director Gomez, and the team as well, we really recognized that the demographics in Lynn, socioeconomic, were very different than the surrounding cities. So for that reason, as you know, the only thing that we really charge here for is the trip to Encore and some field trips you're, we're charging for the transportation to and back. But to, to charge for the transportation, that's something that we, as a team, and especially Director Gomez, the predecessor, he really didn't feel that that was going to be something appropriate for the population that we serve. So transportation is free, as you know. Um, maybe down the line, if we do market runs, if we do anything like that, we certainly will charge. But we certainly, we wanted to be sensitive to the needs of the seniors, the post-COVID seniors. Um, we know that money was tight. Um, so we just, you know, we were very cognizant of that, Betty. We were very cognizant of that. We, and, and I was thinking of that because it was happening just for the gas, for something they, you know, extra, like um, yeah. they have the petty, petty cash yeah. just only for that. And, and, and with all due respect, they take it for everybody, they are in, take it up, no, I hear $10, $20 a month, something like that, mm -hmm. it's not too much. But. I know that we charge $5 for a prom, and although all the seniors enjoyed it, there were some seniors that had a hard time right. coming up with $5. Aww. So, and that's the reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah you know. Is done as, as July 1st? Beg your pardon? Is Gazilda done at July? A Gilda? A Gilda. Gilda. We're looking at at least extending her for the month of July. We are, I mean, we're looking to hire a full-time driver. Mm -hmm. That takes That's time because we're not looking for just anyone that has a license. Yeah. We're looking for a competent, patient person mm. that can drive a wheelchair accessible van and also knows their way around Lynn. As you all know, I drove the van for over a month and many of you I've picked up and dropped off. So there's a certain kind of driver that we're looking for. Yeah. And in today's world, you know, with employees kind of being as they are, we're really looking for the proper fit for that. And that's going to take time, so we're looking at extending uh, a Gilda's transportation services for the month of July, so we can interview, hire, onboard, and also train and orientate. No, no, I was just going to just say, you know, she's right about charging for drive, for, for a person to be picked up and yeah. dropped off. It gets costly. Uh, I remember back in the day, we used to try to get a donation for lunch, and that was that was very difficult. Yeah. I mean, we were looking for, like, you know, a $2 donation, and most people didn't have it. Right. So that, that is the point, they, they, because the people can get the usually that everything is free from the government on this. And they have to put it a little bit because too many receive the money from welfare, from Let's all of these. They as have Pam and I, uh, to do something from the government. Mm -hmm. But as Pam and I suggested last month, they, they, there are resources, like with your insurance. And that if you look into these resources, that you'll be able to, Smitty does it all the time. I only get so many rides a year. Correct. But. But if you see, it's something that more the, I'm going to tell you, more the Spanish I, people. I agree with more the Spanish, the Spanish Safety people is key. From different. You see the line from the food here. Oh, you boy, see the line from the food in Salvation Jeez. Army. You see the food, like the line at Hollywood to look for the food. And the people receive the, the, so in the society, they see the food stamp, receive the extra money from the insurance. And why they have to make it those? Why? Because some other people have um, a store or something in the country of them where they come from and take that food to send it to them for them. I know, I know. It's not and right. that is that they have to put to yeah, push yeah. the people to do something good. Well, well, I'm, well I, I mean, don't think I'm that not the, the senior first, center yes. is, is a is place not, to promote that. Right. I don't I think the senior know, center is the place yeah, to promote I know that. Different, the people, the I don't think that they we're here to judge sorry. people that are, t are getting food. Right. And we're definitely, you know, we're here to be inclusive 
and to offer services and activities for <coughs> the population we serve. I mean, uh, I have a person, I know they will take them the name, but the people have this scale in the house where you can go to a Springfield to look for food, where you can go to Chelsea to look for food, and just go into those people's house, and they have like a, a supermarket there. Well, our, and, we, and they send our them, governor, they send them five, five, six, Betty, five bags to- Betty, to that me. is not the senior center's role. Yeah, true. That's not the senior center's role yeah. to decide that. Yeah, I know, but that is what I say. They have to push them to give you something, the money for here. Well, you you cannot, you can't, obviously, Betty, obviously. We've got the summer club, which is something that you advocated for, so one thing at a time. I mean, we're doing the best that we can. No, I appreciate, I appreciate it. Um, Betty, we can't even, there's people that have yachts that won't give their fair share. So how is somebody that's on limited income going to, you know, you can't mandate kindness. Right. That's the thing. You yeah. cannot mandate brotherly love, but you can give them the opportunity. Thank yeah. you. Nice. John, I'll take your last question. And, and the, uh, mentioning the supper club, the supper club we gave a donation to. I think it was two dollars, which, you know, for a nice dinner, really, that we were getting two dollars. But that's what we were asking for lunch, too, at the old center and yeah. working the table. You can only ask, and you can't question. If they say no, they still yes. got a meal. And we phrased it as a friendly donation because right. some of that historical information filtered through right. to this new space. So we acted accordingly. And so we, like I said, uh, decisions were made early on not to charge for certain things mm -hmm. because we're not dealing with uh, just normal seniors. We're dealing with post-COVID seniors who are also faced with quite challenging financial constraints. Absolutely. So we want to be loving and mindful about that. And if anyone wants from their heart to donate and let it be secret, that's good too, to help out. On that note, will you all excuse me? Yes. Thank you so much. It's good to see you all. Good to see you too. Sure. Thank you. And the other thing, I am thinking about the food because I think the government on those food offices, they, they give the food for the people, they have to be controlled for that. And you sometimes you see around the, the place where they give the food, the food that they, people don't want to deliver it everywhere. And that's tell. So, um, just a we are still short two board members, so if you know anybody that would like to serve on the board, um, they, they can get the applications online or they can get them at City Hall. Uh, uh, George, I think that um, the last meeting you also brought up the parking configuration and um, the handicap, so we'll have to um, continue to reach out about that as the construction goes on. Too, yeah. especially once we get the second floor and um, the tenants are no longer there. So, how many parking spaces does the senior center have? Jackie, I forget. Um, it we when we first were yeah, when we first were getting it. Yeah. The, um, the second floor, the renters, they still have some spaces designated to them. So, uh, yeah, um, we'll have to, I'll put that in the notes to find out next time. Any other new business? I know that Tommy probably handles this and stuff, but the question I have is, does the senior center have a relationship with the Harrington School? Um, no, no, not, um, I wouldn't say not an organized, but I do know that um, whenever we first went here, Counselor Jakutis had reached out uh, to the principal and said that they would like to look into doing things. The school system itself is, um, because of the world we live in, is a little bit, um, uh, what do you want to say, apprehensive, cautious about those kind of things. I do remember one time, um, I don't know if it was 
was it Halloween and the kids were dressed up or something and they did a little parade, you know, because they're they're so young over there. Right. You know, yeah. you know. It's elementary level. Right. Yeah. Same right. as more high school. Well, so I used to do like a reading program. Oh yeah. With the children and the and seniors, and it helped to me. It helped the seniors, but it also helped the children to. Uh, learn how to read practice, mm -hmm. you know, the reading and stuff. So I'm thinking about what it's yeah. That's a nice suggestion, I think. Should I still read? Well, I know. It's so frustrating. But no, that's a nice suggestion. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Do we have a motion to adjourn? Aye. Aye.